Okay, welcome back guys. Um, if you've seen any of these interviews before, you know how it goes. I interview a client of mine and we discuss some of the in-depth details of how they got the results. So you can have a look at this and uh, do the same. Client loses 19 pounds in 12 weeks. Uh, this is body fat. Uh, it's likely a little bit more because a lot of these guys build muscle as well, as you'll see. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. And if you know anyone who wants to get into shape, feel free to share this with them because it will be helpful. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. When we started, what weight were you at? 185. To your current weight? 166. Bloody hell, this beard is bad. This is a while ago. Um, I've, I've actually lost a lot of these interviews, computer troubles. So I'm happy I've been able to dig this one back out. But yeah, 19 pounds. Right now. What nutrition habits did you have when you started? versus what you have now because it's probably just being more conscientious of you know what i'm eating and um with time i'm eating those are the biggest ones probably also you know how i'm preparing certain foods okay so three things he said what he's eating times he's eating and preparing foods two uh, is someone who's a beginner that's not going to mean much it's going to be quite obvious but i'm just going to break down because obviously this interview doesn't do that uh what's he means by that so the timing if you've got two different deficits both people eating 2000 calories exactly the same genetics everything's in line uh the quality the, the timing of the food uh, the preparation of the food um, these are all going to play factors into how much fat loss you achieve even if it's the same uh, calorie deficit just because what's going in may be the same but how it's coming out in terms of energy expression is different if we time our nutrition let's say by choosing the correct carbs to have before workout choosing um, the correct amount of protein to have spread through the day the correct protein sources relating to um, muscle protein synthesis in our sleep it's going to have over a long period of time a different effect for our metabolism. Our metabolism can be regulated by the amount of muscle that we have. If we're building more muscle due to better timing practices, um, then we're going to we're going to be able to maintain our body fat when we lose it, and we're actually going to have more, let's say, horsepower to be burning more calories through the day over time. Anyway, uh, it can also come down to short-term energy. You've eaten a big meal before and crashed. Um, that's the timing, that's the that's the makeup of the foods. If you were to have, for example, a large carb meal which crashes you after a workout, because your body has burned through a lot of glycogen, you're going to make use of that a lot easier and you're not going to crash. Um, so that's what he means by that. In terms of the preparation, that's, part, that's largely timing to fit into a very busy lifestyle, but it's also... Um, preparing food in a way which is not going to destroy the nutrients in it or um, inhibit absorption. So things like zinc, for example, which are inhibited by phytates um, in certain foods. We're not pairing those together. Uh, yeah, so that's what it means. Be careful not to stress eat as well. How has it positively impacted you? It's definitely had a lot of positive impacts. Um, one is I don't, it doesn't hurt when I walk anymore. Um, that, that used to be a real big issue. Um, I used to be out of breath um, when I do real simple movements. Um, that's, I'd say that's pretty much gone. So stress eating hurts when he walks and out of breath easily. These are common issues that clients come to me with. Um, and the stress eating is, it can be different things, depends on the individual. Sometimes it's a behavioral response uh, to needing to get dopamine up for motivation. Um, and we obviously go to, naturally gonna go to the easiest sources uh, to do that obviously hundreds of years ago uh, when food wasn't readily available. That's not how dopamine would naturally occur. It'd be a lot more pain up front and then uh, getting pleasure as a result of that. Now we have to actually work it into our lifestyles so that we do have a positive uh, relationship with dopamine and uh, other other ways of stress eating it, it can be uh, comfort it's it can also be habitual um, so it and then the other side of it is it can be physiological so it could come from an from a lack of and oftentimes we can't 
correctly identify which of these things it is. In terms of the breathlessness, in terms of the pain, I've noticed a lot lately about um, a client, seventh client called Nick as well, who lost this first 10 to 15 pounds and the pain was immediately gone. With, uh, with Bob, it wasn't actually 10 weeks later that the pain was gone. It was within four weeks. A lot of the time that the, these injuries, which are related to inflammation and related to uh, just being overweight in general, because we lose fat quite quickly, uh, they immediately go away. Um, whereas the breathlessness, you would probably, the first thing you would think is if I want to get rid of breathlessness is I'm going to start training cardio. That is not what we did. Um, maybe I'll explain that in another video, but we do not focus on cardio. It's, it's the path of most resistance when it comes to fat loss. Let's hear a little bit more about what he has to say. Um, when I do real simple movements, um, that's, I'd say that's pretty much gone. But, um, you know, like I said, too, I've also learned a lot about nutrition, which has been, you know, extremely helpful and, you know, learning how to build muscle and, you know, uh, by those choices. Mm. Uh, so push-ups, I started with just strictly my body weight. I actually shot. But yeah, one thing I should just mention is, as I don't know how many of these interviews you've seen at this point, but um, every client that I work with, is working on building muscle. If you're if you're hundred pounds overweight, um, then we're gonna be doing a lot less of that. We're still training three times a week. We're still doing body weight movements. We're regressed all the way to the assisted variations, but it's not like the main priority is pushing to failure to grow. Uh, that does happen when you get to a certain like bracket along the lines. Um, Bob's only at this point. He was 30, 40 pounds away from his goal when he started. Um, in his first 12 weeks, he's halfway there. Um, as of this point, I'm pretty sure he's achieved all his goals and he's been maintaining. But that's why he was pushing so hard because when you do maintain, you want to have muscle built up so that your metabolism is, isn't like so much lower than it was when you were overweight. Uh, and that's one of the factors and one of the reasons that we work on that. And it doesn't require too much. It requires signaling the body. It's not destroying the muscles. It's not uh, damaging them so they grow back stronger. It's signaling to the body, to the central nervous system, which has control over what happens um, in muscle protein synthesis in your sleep with your testosterone that we need to grow so we can meet the demands of our environment. And uh, as you can see, because he built his strength with principles which allow you to build muscle, he was able to build muscle. So it starts with body weight push-ups. I was able to progress to 70 pounds on my back at this point. So and then chin-ups, you know, same situation. I, I used to really struggle with chin-ups, but now I'm at the point where I can start to do weighted chin-ups, which is definitely exciting. So. See if I can find any uh, videos of uh, that he sent through of him doing this. Okay, so this is Bob starting with... Um, with the assisted bands and obviously you can see the huge difference in his body at this point now that he's adding weight to it and a lot of these guys they just train from home um you don't really need a lot some people have gym garages some people just put the the chin up bar there uh, that's all you really have to do it's uh, you can go to the gym both of them will work and this is the difference in his back at uh, i believe this is like 19 pounds down uh, so huge differences and one of my favorite videos, which is Bulgarian split squats. Everyone who works with me knows what happens here. Look at the difference in vascularity uh, in the legs. Um, again, you don't need to, there's different ways to load this. You can get a backpack on. Uh, you don't need to buy dumbbells, but uh, depending on your stage, if you're like, I want to maximize muscle growth while I'm losing fat, um, then if you go get yourself some dumbbells and you're in great shape. The thickest band possible, which was about an inch and a half in width. You know, it actually was less difficult than I thought it was going to be, to be honest, because, you know, certain workout programs are really complicated, but this is a little bit more simple for me, which I appreciate. Learning how to progress the weights. Yeah, one other thing I'll say is that making, making workout plans complicated is just a sign of lack of understanding. You should, as Bruce Lee says, fear the man who has practiced one kick a thousand times rather than thousand kicks once. We should be focusing on core movements which get the get a much greater bang for our buck. Um, Bulgarian split squats, um, vertical pull. 
dips or push-ups, these things are going to are going to build more muscle. They're going to stabilize our joints and prevent injury. Um, they're not going to tax the central nervous system. They have much less injury risk involved in doing them. They can be done anywhere. Um, and the progression of them gets more muscle growth per progression. Think how strong you really have to be on deadlifts and squats. And you can love deadlifts and squats as much as you want. That's fine. But how strong do you have to be to see a lot of muscle growth for them? Extremely strong. How likely are you to get injured along that journey? Very likely. So the choices of exercises. It, the goal is to progress. It's not to, who does the fanciest exercises. It's to get strong at them. As well, that, that's been extremely helpful. Anyone who's really you know, struggling with learning how to just build up their body. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot more that went into it than I thought initially. So I think there's a lot of things you have to be conscientious of to really make a really, really good progression. Um, before, before the program, I, I thought I had a really good program in place, but again, I wasn't getting the results that I do now. So, yeah. So as you said, I take care of all the, um, all the heavy lifting and the thinking about it. Um, but there's, there is a lot that goes into making sure that instead of losing 10 pounds in 12 weeks and not gaining any muscle and not feeling good and it being really hard work, that's the difference. You lose 19 pounds. You've built muscle on the way, so it's actually going to be more than that, but that's what the scale shows. You look better as a result of it. You feel better. You have better energy. You're able to maintain the results. These are the two differences. Um, in the coaching, I like to take over, um, but I also like to to educate clients as much as possible so that when they start working with me they're able to continue going on their own and yeah if you are watching this you're wondering whether or not uh, you want to work with me um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more there's links to uh, work together if the link is working there's spots available for one-to-one -one stuff and yeah hope you enjoyed any questions just leave them in the comments or dm me